I'm going to do a think aloud for you to show you when looking at this standard how I go through and look for what word or words affect the tone of the piece of poetry. So I want to look first. We've we've read through our learning target for the day, but I also I want to go back and look at why are we doing it. By the end of the lesson, you're going to be able to analyze how their word choice affects the tone and the meaning in a literary text. So remember that analyze means that we're going to really look deeply at it and and kind of break it down. The word choice are just what words do they choose and why did they choose those? I want you to remember that tone means how the narrator feels about a topic. So almost as if they're talking directly to us, we're going to try and infer how they feel about it. We'll go back over this when we get done with the uh, Think Aloud. <laughs> I lost focus there. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so the piece that I'm going to read for you today is Escape at Bedtime. I always like to just read through it once and get a good feel for it. The lights from the parlor and the kitchen shone out through the blinds and the windows and bars. And high overhead and all moving about, there were thousands of millions of stars. There were nearer such thousands of leaves on a tree, nor of people in church or the park. As the crowds of the stars looked down upon me, and that glittered and winked in the dark. The dog and the plow and the hunter and all, and the stars of the sailor and Mars. These shone in the sky, and the pale by the wall would be half full of water and stars. They saw me at last, and they chased me with their cries, and they soon had me packed into bed. But the glory kept shining, and the bright in my eyes, and the stars going round in my head. This is by Robert Louis Stevenson. So, reading detectives, we're going to go in and look at word choice that has really impacted the way that we feel about this piece. The lights from the parlor and kitchen shone out through the blinds and windows and bars, and high overhead, all moving about, there were thousands of millions of stars. There were near such thousands of leaves on a tree, nor of people in church or the park. As the crowds of the stars looked down upon me, and that glittered and winked in the dark. So I've got some positive words in here. So we've got all these thousands of millions of stars and they're looking down upon him in a non-threatening way. These are, they're glittered and winked. So when I think about these, these stars and the word glittered, that's cheerful. And when I think about winked in the dark, this is a type of figurative language. This is personification. And remember, it's got that word person in it. So it's giving these human characteristics to a non-human item or topic. So we have him we have him getting ready to go to bed and um, he can see out his window and he's got all these thousands of millions of stars so it's a really bright bright night the dog and the plow and the hunter and all and the stars of the sailor and mars these shone in the sky and the pale by the wall would be half full of water and stars they saw me at last and they chased me with cries and they soon had me packed into bed but the glory kept shining and bright in my eyes and the stars going round in my head. So these are all different types of constellations that you see in the sky at night when the sky is clear.
no clouds, which indicates that it's not a stormy night. They saw me at last. They chased me with cries. Think about when you're out on the playground or you're playing in the yard with people. You hear all the screaming and the squealing because this, this word cries indicates that people are happy. They're chasing him. They're playing. They soon had me packed into bed. It was bedtime. So he got sleepy. And the stars gently put him to bed. But the glory kept shining and bright in my eyes and the stars going round in my head. So they kept shining. So if he or she was afraid of the dark, um, they brought light. So they would not be afraid of the dark. So we're going to look at how this model um, and my annotating helps demonstrate the understanding of this target of word choice. How, do the, how does the word choice affect the tone? So, for example, the words glittered and winked show that it's, it's bright and it's cheerful and there's going to be restful sleep. The kid isn't sad or the person isn't sad about going to bed. Um, these are just the things that they're able to notice in a very bright sky. Um, when we look at that word winked again, um, we know that stars can't actually wink. So the author gives us that human quality, which helps us relate to it and sets the tone. When we get down here to stanza two, remember poetry is broken into stanzas. When I get down here to stanza two, this word packed has a connotative meaning. It's that feeling of being tucked into bed. And that's what the author wanted to suggest by using the word packed. Now, if this word packed was replaced with, um, say, thrown, or um, wrestled we would not have a good feeling about it it would be the opposite we would feel that the person didn't want to go to bed they were scared they were angry they were afraid but the word packed means that someone gently kind of carried you packed you back there and and put you into bed so you can start to see how word choice helps us understand the feeling that the piece of poetry conveys, which is tone in a literary text. So now that, now that you're beginning to see how words affect the meaning, I'm going to have you work on a piece on your own. To demonstrate mastery of today's target, you're going to read a piece of poetry titled Why Me? I would like for you to analyze this piece. You can highlight or underline the words that you feel affect the tone and meaning. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to classify these words or words that you have highlighted and you're going to tell if they're connotative or used as figurative language. And then after that, I want you to go back and look even deeper and you're going to infer how these words have affected the tone and the meaning of this of the piece of poetry that you are analyzing. I know you can do it. You're going to be great.